Today I went shopping at my beloved local bookstore, Trails and Books. They were the first to support me when I became an author, and I hope to find myself working there again very soon. Since today I felt like shopping for books, this was the perfect place to go. I came home with several new fairy tales to read, and decided I would share with you some of my favorite books in my fantasy and folklore book collection, as lately I've been in the mood to escape to far-off enchanted places, and hope you will find some new books to read this season. And without further ado, here are my favorite whimsical book recommendations. Hello everyone, I wanted to make part two of my kind of book style videos uh, recommending books uh, related to a certain topic. I'm certainly doing this for my own bookish self-interest and again I understand not everyone are readers but those of you who are I thought that I could make some recommendations related to my love of fairy tales and folklore. I feel that there is so many themes in fairy tales and folklore that are all about healing that inner child and nurturing yourself and finding that truth within and not being afraid to be who you are, being someone with imagination, being someone who fights for uh, what they believe as so many heroines in fairy tales do. And there is no season that feels more fairy-like than springtime. So I thought this would be the perfect time to share these books with you and hopefully you might enjoy them and they might inspire you. I made one video before on book recommendations about elevating ordinary life and slow living in mindfulness so I will leave that link down below. I will begin with the book that I read most recently that I did enjoy. It is not one of my all-time favorites but I thought I would share it because it has been quite popular lately and it is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. It is a very interesting book about an academic named Emily Wilde who finds herself in this um, strange isolated town where she wants to study the local fairies and folklore. The fairies in this world are very traditional style fairies that that are often not to be trusted and rather cunning. If you prefer sweet little flower fairies and tinkerbells, this is not going to be the type of fairy you find in this book. <laughs> However, it was very atmospheric and enchanting and I really enjoyed it. It is a romance and I'm not always a huge fan of romances, mostly because I personally feel that in many romances, um, the characters often um, portray quite unlikable qualities. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's just the, the romances I happen to have read, but I still enjoyed the romance, so I will put this on your list in case you haven't heard about it before, might be worth looking into. East of the Sun, West of the Moon by Jackie Morris, and also The Wild Swans by Jackie Morris, and Snow and Rose by Emily Winfield Martin are all retellings of fairy tales, and the reason I put these books together are because they are iconic to me because of their illustrations. The illustrations are enchanting and beautiful and transparent transport you into another world and I highly recommend them for their art if not for their stories because I think both the poetic style of Jackie Morris's writing and the art of Emily Winfield Martin is just beautiful. Another kind of fantasy folklore inspired book is Daughter of the Moon Goddess. It is also has elements of romance but it is not the very main part of the book which I can appreciate. I like when the heroine has a plot and a story outside of the romance as well and I found it to be very enchanting and interesting. I did not enjoy the last part quite as much as the beginning, but it was very atmospheric and it really ignited my imagination. Su Lin Tang as well has a lovely writing style that I found very easy to read. The Wolf and the Whale as well by Jordana Max Brodsky, I want to say that correctly. <laughs> While this book has elements of fantasy as well as just within the normal fiction category, it does have inspiration taken from actual history and it does share some Inuit folklore and legends that are beautiful and really thought-provoking and I really love the main character in this book. It tells the story of an Inuit woman who wants to be a warrior and it is a interesting adventure all about culture clashes as well as going into the ancient mythology of the Inuit people. I also have Woodland Folk Tales and I also have another book in the same series called Botanical Folk Tales and they just go into several stories related to Britain and Ireland that I really enjoyed and were um, kind of simplistic more fairy tale stories and um, they were beautifully written. 
I also enjoyed By Oak, Ash, and Thorn by Melissa Harrison. The illustrations are just so cute and the story is wonderful and of course about little tiny people that live in the forest. I also love Howl's Moving Castle. If you were a huge fan of the movie, I will warn you that the main character of Howl is a little bit different in the story. He, in my opinion, was not quite as likable as in the movie, but he was still really fun to get to know and all the characters are so charming. I also enjoyed Eva Evergreen, the semi-magical witch. I want to say that right. Um, it was just a really cute, heartfelt story, very positive, not too stressful, which was really good. And it's just a story of a little witch who is starting to try to make her new life and open a magical repair shop in a town to become a well-respected witch. It is a really sweet story, and I believe there's another book out as well in the series. The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of her own Making by Catherine M. Valente is a beautiful story. If you are a fan of Alice in Wonderland, if you like that sort of kind of um, absurdist fairy tale storytelling, you will love this. I felt like it just hit all those same cozy feels that I feel when I read um, kind of enchanting, nonsensical sorts of fairy tales, and it just makes my imagination run wild. So I really love it. For graphic novels, I really loved The Moth Keeper by Katie O'Neill. Um, I also enjoyed the chapter book, The Spiderwick Chronicles. I grew up with this series and I've talked about both these books a lot, so I'm not going to talk about them too much, but yes. And of course, because I love fairies and this is the Cottage Fairies YouTube channel, I have of course the fairy handbook, which just has all the information you could possibly need on the fairy folk. And it feels like reading a really long magazine. It is very easily digestible writing and um, just a little bit of everything is in this book. And so you might enjoy it no matter what your age if you uh, love fairies like I do. This is definitely the weirdest book I have, but I personally love it. It is, however, not for everyone. It is called The Land of Stone Flowers, A Fairy Guide to the Mythical Human Being. <laughs> and um, it is very strange. The art in it is very different. You will see all sorts of interesting art in it. So if you like kind of odd, eccentric books, you will enjoy this one. It is um, has a beautiful cover and inside it's about fairies and analyzing humans from a fairy perspective, and it is uh, quite cute and unique. I'm a huge fan of the Storyteller's Handbook. On the back it says, you hold the map to places only you can see. There are no words to this book, they are just images, and you flip through and you let these images inspire your imagination, and you can create stories of what is going on in the paintings and the art is so unique and thought-provoking and I found myself coming up with all sorts of stories. It is a very beautiful meditative exercise as well. Stories are doorways. The imagination has no boundaries, no walls, or borders. All doors are open to us, especially when we make them ourselves. So that is my last recommendation. I do have other books related to fairy tales and folklore, but these are definitely the ones that most come to mind when I think of this genre. Maybe if you are interested in kind of fantasy, fairies, and folklore, folklore, you could look into these books or share your recommendations down below. That is everything. I actually don't know what other types of book related videos I should do, so I'm going to stop here for now, but I wanted to mix these in just now and then, maybe once a month or so. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you very soon. Take care. Goodbye.